afternoon, everybody. Wayne, thank you very much for that uh, generous introduction. And thank you, Pat, for once again inviting Blue Origin to come speak here and present to you all what we have been up to uh, at Blue. Um, but what I want to talk to you today about um, is what we call operational reusability. So what we're up to in our, uh, in, our, in our launch business, but how we take this special approach to it. So let me back up the train a little bit. The, the vision at, at Blue Origin is to have millions of people living and working in space. Uh, that's, that's a grand vision, certainly. For us, though, what does that, what does that mean? Um, for us, that's, that doesn't mean searching for a plan B for, for humankind, but for us, it means moving heavy industry into space, moving uh, things that, that pollute our planet uh, into space so that we can preserve our planet, turn it into residential, light industrial. And the only way that you do that, though, is through uh, bringing down the cost of, of access to space. Now, when our, uh, our founder, Jeff Bezos, started thinking about, well, how do we address this, this issue? At the beginning of the, of the company, we went through all sorts of different technologies, and what it came down to was we needed rockets, because you can scale rockets, uh, and they needed to be reusable. Now, this concept of, of reusability is uh, not a new one, although right now it certainly is the, the hot topic du jour, but a way that we needed to approach it was through operational reusability. So we first start with New Shepard. This is our suborbital vehicle. I hope you have all seen uh, New Shepard in flight, either through our, our videos or our online webcasts. But this rocket that you see uh, behind me was the first rocket to fly into space and come back to land. Now, it, it blows my mind that we're uh, coming up on the two-year anniversary of that. That was November of 2015. But just as important as that first landing, in fact, was the four more subsequent flights and landings of uh, this New Shepard rocket, our, our second tail of New Shepard. So for a total of five launches and landings, it proved that you can do reusable rockets. Now, with New Shepard, um, eventually we'll be taking people into space, um, but what, where it's key to our overall program is we're using it to teach ourselves how to launch, how to land, but how to effectively and efficiently do uh, the turnaround on the rocket, the operations and the maintenance. And that is what I mean by operational reusability. We're taking those lessons from New Shepard, where we're going to be gaining lots of uh, experience at a relatively low cost. Uh, and when I say that, I mean we can launch and land New Shepard for at least 1 50th the going price of an orbital launch today. And we're rolling those lessons into New Glenn, which is our orbital rocket, which will be uh, launching by the end of 2020. So what does operational reusability, uh, when you get that down to, to, to brass tacks, how have we incorporated this into the rocket? So starting with New Shepard, some of the elements that we've, we've built into the rocket include, uh, well, first, frankly, it starts with our BE3 engine our Blue Engine 3. It's our LOX hydrogen engine. It throttles up to 110,000 pounds of thrust, but when, you come, when, when we come back to land, we pull back on the throttle. We can go as low as 20,000 pounds of thrust. We've got that full window. There are no blackout zones in there. And what it allows for is a nice, soft landing. How does that play into operational reusability? It means that we're not jostling the system every time we bring it back down to land. It means that the turnaround on the rocket uh, the maintenance on the rocket is reduced. Also means that you can re excuse me, you can reuse that rocket that many more times. The other thing uh, about this this rocket is uh, and the rocket engine is that we are planning to not take out the rocket engine in between flights. Of course, we'll do boroscope inspection. Uh, we'll you know, look at all the data, et cetera. But we don't need to take it out. Again, reduces the time. Uh, and also the workforce needed to, uh, to turn around our rocket. Uh, and uh, one of the, the, uh, the other examples, not uh, engine-based, uh, is the thermal protection foam on the outside of the rocket. It's a simple spray-on foam. Sometimes some of it chips off. We just smooth on uh, some new foam on the outside. It's relatively quick, 
inexpensive process, we're ready to go again. Last but not least, we've got access panels on the outside. So instead of, again, having to take apart the rocket to try to get to various subsystems, the important subsystems we put on the outside so we can just easily inspect and go. So these are technologies, these are, these are elements of the rocket and the rocket design that we have put into the rocket from the very beginning. So we're not add-on things. This was thoughtful investment on the front end to lead to operational reusability. And as mentioned, uh, not only uh, does the, uh, when we think about operational reusability, it's not just the hardware that you put on the rocket and how you design it, but it's also this thinking of what kind of uh, ground support equipment, what kind of GSC, what type of uh, teams and sizes of teams do we need to be able to turn around this rocket? And all of these elements uh, have led to smaller teams and faster turnarounds. So what I can tell you is that for New Shepard, in between those, those uh, five flights that we did on tail two, it cost us low tens of thousands of dollars. That's relative pennies in comparison to building in a whole new rocket. Again, this concept of reusability is not a new one. And in fact, we've had reusable spacecraft in the past. But again, if you're having to tear down the entire vehicle and rebuild it and inspect it and rebuild it, you might as well just start with a new vehicle. That's not what's going to lead to the, the dramatic uh, lowering of the cost of access to space and therefore to the millions of people living in space. As noted, we are also going to, excuse me, roll those lessons into New Glenn. So our New Glenn rocket, again, launching uh, in, by the end of 2020 from, from the Cape. Um, when it comes to the, uh, I'll, I'll be more specific just on the, on the engine here, the BE-4 is going to have a lot of the same properties as the BE-3. It's, uh, it's a different propellant. It's LOX LNG, and many people have asked from the very beginning when we announced this engine back in about two, in 2014, why would you go with LNG? Operational reusability. It's a clean propellant, so when we're uh, doing the maintenance on the rocket and the rocket engines, we can get our technicians in there faster. They can turn around the, the rocket uh, more quickly. Uh, the LNG also allows for autogenous pressurization. It means that we don't need helium. It brings down the, the cost of uh, operating that vehicle. It also reduces some of the risk uh, in the supply chain of helium. Uh, and the other thing is that it's, it in itself, LNG, is extraordinarily inexpensive. There's a, a well-developed um, supply chain that's available in the U.S. for LNG, and so it allows us to, again, reduce the cost of operating this vehicle. So, as you see, we've, we've taken our time and we've been very patient with this process of building operational reusability into our systems. Uh, our motto at Blue Origin is gradatum ferocitor, or step-by-step step ferociously. Uh, this, is, this is the mentality that we have at Blue. Um, and it's, it's funny when, um, uh, when we go out, when, when, uh, when the Blue Origin team uh, and, and I go out to talk about Blue Origin, they say, well, what's taking you guys so long? What have you been doing hiding up there in the, you know, the mists of the Pacific Northwest? What we've been doing is upfront investment in designing this rocket to be operational and reusable. This is not a rocket that we decided to, you know, slap some legs on and see if we could land it. This has been built to support our vision of millions of people living and working in space. Uh, and again, the only way that you do it is by lowering the cost of access to space through operationally reusable vehicles. Thank you very much. <laughs>